In the microbiology laboratory, it is important that we go over a few safety rules. In the microbiology laboratory, you have some safety hazards that you've experienced in other laboratories, but one that you have not experienced before in all likelihood. Chemicals are used in most laboratories, and fire is typically a problem in most laboratories. But we work with microorganisms in the microbiology laboratory. These microorganisms should be treated as though they are potential pathogens. That is, they should be treated as though they could make you deathly ill. The organisms we work with in micro are relatively low pathogenicity. But at any point, depending upon you and how they enter your body, they could make you ill. So it is important that you follow these safety rules as well as follow the rules of aseptic technique that you will be taught later in order to remain safe and not pick up any nasty diseases while you're in lab. In order to be safe, one of the protective devices you will need is a lab coat. The lab coat will be worn while you're in lab will not be worn outside of lab, and most students find it perfectly all right to leave the lab coat in lab in between labs. They don't take it anywhere with them. If you want to take your lab coat out of lab with you, you need to put it in a plastic bag and keep it in the plastic bag. Do not take it out. The lab coat should have long sleeves. It should be fingertip length. The idea is that when you are seated, your lab coat would cover your lap and it must fasten up the front. It can't pull off over your head. It is important that you wear your lab coat whenever you're working with microorganisms. Should microorganisms splash or get onto your clothing somehow, the lab coat is the barrier between you and the clothing that you will wear every day. As you go home to pick up your children, as you go to the grocery store to go grocery shopping, you will not have microorganisms on your clothes because they'll be on your lab coat safely tucked away in the microbiology lab. Safety goggles are required in some laboratories, but we use such small quantities of chemicals in such a controlled environment that they will not be required for microbiology lab. Some labs make you wear gloves when you're handling specimens. We think it's a good idea for you to use them when you're staining because the stains are pretty permanent. They stay on your hands for a while if you get your hands stained. Typically, your intact skin is a sufficient barrier against microorganisms, so there really shouldn't be a need to wear gloves while you're handling the organisms in lab. However, gloves are provided if at any time you feel the need of them. One of the laboratory safety rules and a very important practice to get into, no matter whether you're in the micro lab or not, is hand washing. You should wash your hands before and after lab, particularly after lab. To wash your hands properly, you need to remove all of your hand jewelry, unless it's a plain wedding band, and wet your hands with warm water. There's nothing magical about warm water. Hot water and cold water are simply a little harsh and may cause your hands to chap. And if you have chapped hands, then you don't have that nice intact skin barrier. Warm water is simply more skin friendly. You want to use soap, and we use liquid soap because only the soap that you're using gets on your hands. The rest of the soap in the container remains uncontaminated with any organisms that might be on your hands. You want to work up a good lather. The most important part of hand washing is not that soap kills germs, which it really doesn't, but that you are using friction. The soap breaks down the oils on your hands. Bacteria are trapped in those oils. If you break down the oils and use some friction to scrub and remove the bacteria, then when you rinse your hands, most of the bacteria go away in the rinse water. As you're washing your hands, you want to make sure you wash all the surfaces, get down in between your fingers, scrub your fingers really well. They say you should wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, scrub really nicely. That's long enough to sing the alphabet song or happy birthday, which are always good ways to make sure you're washing your hands long enough. When you have finished that nice friction scrubbing of your hands, you want to rinse your hands and let the water run from your wrists to your fingertips. Your wrists are the cleanest part of your hands at this point, and as you wash bacteria away, you will wash from clean to dirty. Your fingertips are always going to be one of the dirtiest parts of your body because they're the first thing that comes in contact with the outside world. Once you have washed your hands, you'll want to get a paper towel 
and pat your hands dry. Again, working from wrist to fingertip. You will disinfect your table before and after lab. This will simply give you a nice clean workspace as you start lab and will leave a nice clean workspace after lab. You need to minimize the material that you bring to the lab table. There will be an area in the lab that will sort of be our clean zone. This is where you will leave your book bags and all of your personal items. You should not bring any personal items to the table. This includes cell phones, iPads, or anything like that. All you need is your lab manual or the pages from the lab manual that we're working with that day and something to write with. If you have any cuts, you should cover them with a Band-Aid. If your hands are broken out, if they're chapped, if there's a rash on them, this is a time that you would wear gloves when you're handling cultures. Otherwise, as long as your skin's in good shape, gloves are not a necessity. If you have long hair, keep it tied back. It's just safer in the laboratory. It can run across the back decinerator and potentially get a little fried. Hair can trail through your cultures. This does two things. It contaminates your culture, but more importantly is it puts the bacteria on you and you're going to walk out of the lab with some of that bacteria on you. Not something we want to have happen. If you have exceptionally long facial hair, you also want to make sure that that stays out of the way in lab. We don't need any dangly jewelry. If you're wearing long necklaces, tuck them inside your shirt so that they don't dangle into your cultures. Also, as we mentioned in hand washing, you don't want any rings on your fingers when you're washing your hands. You really don't need to be wearing them during lab either. All of the cracks and crevices in any kind of ring act as a place for bacteria to settle in and a way for you to take them out of lab. If you do wear rings regularly and you want to remove them for lab, and you should remove ornate rings for lab, be sure you put them in a safe place that will leave lab with you your pocket, not your lab coat pocket. You want to put them in your book bag or your purse. All accidents, no matter how minor, need to be reported to the lab instructor. And should you think that any of the material you've been given to work with in lab is damaged in any way, also call that to the instructor's attention. This is very important. We do not want you working with unsafe equipment and we will either say, oh no, that's really okay to use, or we will replace it with appropriate equipment. We have different kinds of trash in the micro lab. Anything that has microorganisms associated with it is considered biohazard trash. This also means anything that has blood or body fluids on it. We will have special trash cans that have biohazard bags in them. Those bags will be autoclave before the trash is disposed of. We also work with slides, and slides are considered sharps, so if we're discarding slides, they will go into a special sharps box. This is typically a cardboard box so that the corners of the slides can't punch through and cut anyone who might be emptying that piece of trash. And then finally, we do have plenty of just regular trash. Those paper towels you dry your hands with, the paper towels you use to wipe off the disinfectant from your tabletop, those are just regular trash. We don't want to put regular trash in the biohazard trash unnecessarily. Since the biohazard trash is autoclaved, if we have a lot of extra trash in there, it puts an extra burden on the autoclave. So try to keep everything straightened out. If you're not sure, ask. The question may be asked back to you, where do you think it should go? Just to get you to think about what's on it. But always ask if you're unsure. Some of the cultures we will use will be in reusable glassware. You will need to label these things when you're working with them or they may come to you already labeled. At the end of the lab, it is your responsibility to remove any labeling from that reusable glassware. Since the reusable glassware is biohazard, there will be a special place assigned for that material so that it can be autoclaved and the glassware can then be washed and reused. The back decinerators are what we use to sterilize the loops and needles. These are ceramic cores that are heated to a very high temperature, 1500 degrees Fahrenheit or 815 degrees centigrade. It's hot down there. When you see that red glow inside that back decinerator, it's very, very hot. That's very good in that it kills those microorganisms, but it also means that that outside silver screen gets very hot as well. 
Do not prop books or papers against that silver screen and never ever pick up the back to incinerator by that silver screen. Always handle it by the base. Just because you think the back to incinerator hasn't been used in a while and you think it's cool doesn't mean it is cool. So avoid that silver screen. We don't want fires. We don't want bad burns. You need to remain NPO during lab. NPO is a medical term that means nothing by mouth. This means that there is no eating in the laboratory, there is no drinking in the laboratory, you do not apply any kind of cosmetic including chapstick or lip balm, you don't really need to chew gum in the laboratory, you don't put anything in or near your mouth while you're in the laboratory. That's a good general rule anyway, but it's particularly important when you're in microbiology. Your mouth is one of the ways microorganisms can enter your body. So we don't want to put anything near your mouth. If you chew on your pencil, get over that habit. If you chew on your hair, get over that habit. Do not chew your nails. Lots of bad habits can be stopped during microbiology lab. Be sure you care for all of the lab equipment correctly. Failure to do so can have an impact on your grade. You will be shown how to use everything, including your microscopes, and once you are shown how to care for it, you will be expected to care for that equipment appropriately. All cultures have to remain in the lab. The micro lab is a little bit like Vegas. What happens in the micro lab stays in the micro lab. That's why you wear lab coats. That's why you wash your hands. And we can't let the cultures take little field trips home so you can show your family what you've been working with in lab. It's just not a safe practice. Some of the media will come to you in test tubes. You need to get in the habit of always using a test tube rack to carry any of the media, even if it is only one test tube. Make sure you're using a test tube rack at all times. We cannot allow any visitors in lab. You will be trained in aseptic technique. You will know safe practices to prevent moving organisms in and out of the lab, but visitors will not have this training. That is why there will be no visitors allowed in the laboratory. We will also keep doors and windows closed. Windows and doors being open allows air currents to flow through the lab and bacteria that may have gotten into the air could blow on those air currents and potentially leave lab that way. It's always a good idea to read anything you're going to study prior to coming to class. This is true of your lab manual. You may not understand everything that you're reading, but you will know what is in the lab manual. This could mean that while I am going over the pre-lab, you can simply underline important parts in the lab manual rather than scrambling to take a bunch of notes and not really listening or watching to the demonstrations. All labs have a fire extinguisher. This is typically a multi-type fire extinguisher that's good for all kinds of fires. Find where it's located and take a look at it. The fire extinguishers that we have are typically the ones where you pull a ring out of the handle. This allows the handle pieces to be squeezed together. The hose on the side of the fire extinguisher can then be pulled away from the cylinder and used to point at the fire. The hose should be aimed at the base of the flames in order to extinguish the flames. Be sure you know where your fire exits are. The microbiology lab fire exits are typically very close to the lab doors themselves and will take you outside, either outside the stairs or outside, directly outside. Also look and see if you can find the fire alarms. Any direct exit to the outside typically has a fire alarm near it. If you are evacuating a building because of a fire, go ahead and pull the fire alarm. The safety shower is a little bit of a redundancy in the micro lab. Safety showers are much more important in chemistry labs where you might get large quantities of chemicals on you that you would need to wash off a large part of your body. When you stand under the safety shower and pull the handle, you literally do get a shower. And in order to stop the shower, you have to push the handle back up and turn it off. Since most of the chemicals we use are going to be tiny amounts, you might get a drop or two of something on your hands and simply washing your hands well will take care of that. All of the labs are equipped with an eye wash. Should something splash in your eye, you would go to the eye wash, put your face down over the bowl, and push or pull the handle, which would have water come from the two sides of the bowl and wash across your eyes to wash out any chemicals that you may have gotten in your eye. 
Some labs have an emergency power off button. This emergency power off button will cut the electricity to the outlets in the lab. This is important if someone has somehow become part of an electrical circuit. Once they're part of an electrical circuit, you do not want to touch them, otherwise you become part of the electrical circuit, so you need to cut off the circuit. That's the purpose of the emergency power off button. Pensacola State College has its own police department, and you routinely will see officers in blue patrolling campus, either on foot or in patrol cars. We also have a public safety department, and these people are typically dressed in brown, they may give tickets, they also assist the police department with various things like unlocking doors or escorting students to cars after dark. In order to get in touch with the police department, you need to call 484-2500. This will get you the dispatcher who is on the Pensacola campus. Because our police officers are typically out walking around on the campus checking on things, they are not sitting in an office waiting for the phone to ring. The dispatcher can get in touch with them via radio and the closest officer will be sent to the area you are requesting assistance. If you're using a campus phone to call the dispatcher, you only need to dial the last four digits of the phone number, 2500. When you call, you need to be able to describe the situation. What do you need? Do you need a fire truck? Do you need an ambulance? Do you need assistance because somebody has freaked out and pulled a gun or is threatening people? Or what do you need? You need to stay on the line until you are told to hang up. So don't just call and say, I need help and hang up. They can't find you that way and you need to be able to give your location. So make sure you know the room number that you're in, the building that you're in, the campus that you're on. These are important things to let the dispatcher know so that the officer can be dispatched as quickly as possible into the right location. Sometimes you may feel that it would be quicker to call 911, and it might be. However, the 911 dispatcher will get in touch with our dispatcher to see if they know what's going on. It's quicker if you call the 2500 dispatcher, let them call 911. If you say, we need an ambulance, we need a fire truck, whatever we need, they will do that. If you call 911 first out of habit, that's fine, but just remember to immediately call the campus dispatcher so that they know to expect fire trucks or police or somebody coming into the area. They can get our police officers lined up to assist the responders that are coming on campus, and they will also confirm with the 911 dispatcher that we have a true emergency on campus.